Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge, fresh off their critically acclaimed off-Broadway premiere productions of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Ruth Stage returns with a captivating adaptation of James McClure's dark comedy, Lone Star. And I drop by Theater Row to catch up with the show's stellar cast and director during a break in rehearsal. Lone Star is my favorite play. Roy is my favorite character. So I'm very excited to be doing it again. Um, it was done in the 1970s, but it's rarely done in New York City. So I think a lot of people are going to be seeing this play for the first time. It had its Broadway premiere in 1979, I believe. Uh, Powers Booth played the character of Roy that, that I'm playing, the, the vet with uh, PTSD. But this is the off-Broadway premiere now, uh, you know, 44 years later. Um, and it's a great show. We did it on a very small scale in 2010, 2017, and 2019 in New York City. Small little runs, but, you know, with the recent successes of uh, our Cat on a Hot Tin Roof productions, we are now able to really do something that I've always wanted to do, make a legitimate off-Broadway run about Lone Star, you know, with the show. And so, super excited that the time has finally come. We're at Theater Row. We open Saturday, so uh, we're almost there. Um, but it's it's very exciting because it was always something in the back of my mind that I was like, one day, we're gonna put Lone Star on a, on a on a much bigger level than than we've done, and here we are. I mean, it's such a cool little play that one of the main things that I like about it is that not that many people know about it, so they're not gonna come in with this preconceived notion of what this play should be. Even though this play's been around since the 1970s, it's a hidden gem that we're taking out and we're polishing it up and we're gonna present it to everyone and they're gonna look at it and go, wow, that's pretty cool. The text is so, it has no business being so funny. It, it's so. And he is so funny. But it's Naturally not. Naturally I mean, funny. and thank you, but it's like, it's not wow. hard. Like you just read the words. You, 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 you read the words and you understand the motivation. You understand that this is just like, this is just plain and simply a bad guy with a silver spoon in his mouth who has absolutely no regard for human compassion. And you just, you just let the words come out. It's all on the page. It is absolutely hysterical. I love, I love playing this type of role. Someone who shows up ruins everything. Like that is such a fun role to play. And I, I promise that's not who I am. I promise that's not who I am. So it, it's sort of cathartic to do that in fake life because in real life, I'm always trying to fix everything. Um, I, I, I love the role of Cletus. I can't wait for the audiences to get to meet him. You know, the other great aspect is James McClure wrote a play called Laundry and Bourbon, which is a companion piece to Lone Star. Because we've done Lone Star so many times, I have been able to develop a relationship with the, uh, the McClure estate. He passed in 2011, I believe. Uh, but I'm, I'm very close with um, his family. But Joe had come up with the idea, you know, way back when we were talking about this, is, well, if we could just take Roy's wife, the character of Elizabeth, somehow figure out a way to bring her into Lone Star so that we can get a more richer backstory of what Roy's really going through. Having Anna come in to play Elizabeth, she, she's kind of like the, the prologue of the play. Like she gives you this really great rich story of what she's going through, uh, how, how it's affecting her, what Roy's going through, and, and she just does such a great job um, not only in her monologues of conveying to the audience like really what's going on before you even meet the other three characters, but then she sings as well, and she's such a talented performer. Musically, it's like it's like it's just recording artist quality. Like yeah, she it's has like you're a, in a studio with her. Her voice is and, and her she has such a beautiful is, voice, and she's singing yeah. songs of like the Vietnam era. So I mean, she's very engaging. She pulls you in right away. So this is really like an original adaptation, uh, you know. And Joe and I. You know, we formulated the script together. So adding Anna to the production, I think, just makes it even more richer and more fuller because you're getting that backstory that you otherwise wouldn't get if you're just seeing Lone Star. It's, it's allowing me to just, like, put all my feelings on a table and just, like, pick and choose and pick and choose and just, like, it's, it's like a, a, a catharsis. And... Um, I also love that I get to sing and use my guitar to just uh, vent 
what I'm feeling and what I can express with words, I express it through my guitar. Like we're talking about mental health here. And to me, that's so deep. It's, it's, a, it's a topic that is so current and that is happening in, in more houses and more families than I can imagine. And how a woman needs to deal with all of that and how the character of Roy is also dealing with that and how like love can overcome all of that. So it's, it's very powerful and beautiful. Talk about partnering with the veteran groups. It's very important. Yeah, that's another thing that me and the James McClure family had always talked about. Like, well, if we do it again, we'd like to be able to partner with veterans organizations, raise awareness for PTSD. And so we've partnered with uh, Warrior Rising and VetLinks.org. Also, Iraqi war veteran uh, Magda Khalifa has uh, partnered with us as well. Um, she's a real uh, ad advocate for PTSD resources. So uh, Ruth Stage is, is working with her and the other two organizations. Uh, you know, a portion of the proceeds from all performances will go to these veterans organizations. And on opening night, on December 3rd, we're having a talk back after the performance with Magda, with the president of VetLinks.org and with the president of um, Warrior Rising. So the whole night is really going to be about honoring vets, raising PTSD awareness. It takes place in the 70s, but it's so right for right now. I mean, extremely, talking, yeah. extremely for what's going on right now. The country's in a turmoil. The country was in a turmoil back then. You know, a lot of people, are, unless, you know, they're of my uh, generation, are not going to remember Lyndon Johnson. They're not going to remember the Vietnam War. They're not going to remember General Westmoreland. They're not going to remember Nixon. Um, they're not going to remember, the, uh, you know, what Jane Fonda did back then. They're not going to remember what was going on in the colleges back then, even though now a lot of the same stuff is going on. And to see how the country was reacting uh, was a really interesting time. And we, we tend to forget because we don't like to bring this stuff up, but we're bringing it up. And um, people are going to be aware of it for sure.